of service with these, sir? And you may be seated, page number 329, The Cleansing Way. I appreciate Christ saved my soul, he forgave me all my sins, I don't deserve it, but I'm washed by the blood. And in 329, oh, I see the Crimson Way. Oh, how I see the Crimson Way. The work this evening. The memory work this month is Psalm 100, 1 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Is anybody else ready this evening? Brother Don. Psalm 100, 1 and 2. <coughs> Good job. Anybody else ready this evening? Marianne. Psalm 100, 1 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you Good job. Anybody else ready this evening? Brother Lewis. Psalm 100, 1 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. Good job. Anybody else ready this evening? Miss Anna. Psalm 101 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Good job. Anybody else ready this evening? Brother Jason. Psalm 101 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Oh, 
we left. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence and sing. That's the theme. <clears throat> Good job, brother. Anybody else ready this evening? Phoenix. Psalms 101 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make, serve the, um, all you lands. Serve the Lord. And what is that? What is that? Come before his presence with singing. Good job. Anybody else ready this evening? Miss Katie. Good job. Anybody else ready? Miss Emily. Psalm 101 through 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Good job. Miss Breedy. Psalm 101 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Good job. Anybody else ready this evening? Miss Lynn. Psalm 101 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence and sing. Good job. Anybody else ready this evening? Brother Gabriel. Psalm 101 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Good job. Anybody else ready this evening? Patrick. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endures to all generations. Good job. Anybody else ready this evening? Well, if that's all, then turn with me to... Psalm 100. Psalm 100, verses 1 and 2, pausing at the punctuation marks, the Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Richard's still sick. Bethany's out sick tonight. Uh, the Feenies are out because Priscilla. I think Priscilla and Bethany have the same thing. And Bethany got up. The only time I saw her today, she got up and went and brushed her teeth and then went back to bed. And uh, she's nauseous. And now she's not throwing up, but she's really sick at her stomach and her body and her mind. She said it, she's dizzy and dazed. And Priscilla was just, last night we were together with them. And Priscilla was hurting so bad her stomach that she started crying. So that takes pretty much the whole Feeney family out because Brother James had to go into the office. So uh, he should be here if he's maybe he's on his way now from work. And then Brother Greg, good to see you back. I saw you slip in, made it just in the nick of time. So he had to make a trip. He had to go into the office too. Well, the office is in Austin. He has to go in what about once every once a quarter. Once a quarter. And so that's a three-day trip to Austin. So he left Sunday after church, got there Sunday evening, and he said, I'm going to try and be back in time for church because his family was already here. Uh, praise the Lord for that. And the Gonzaleses, I'll mention this again during prayer time, but Miss Norma went to the doctor today, and I told you she had a doctor's appointment, and she had to make it the 10 days or go to the emergency room. She made it the 10 days. Uh, she got some good news and some other news, and so... Uh, she's got some follow-up appointments, and she said for now she's not sharing details. So just thank you for the prayers, and please continue to pray for her. And then Brother Jake, he should be finding out something Monday, right? Yeah. 18 now. Okay. All right. So he, you know, he was having the lung issue, and they found some spots on his lung, and he's been out of church for a long time now because they, can't, they ruled out cancer, praise the Lord, and they ruled out tuberculosis.
but they said it's some kind of infection that may be contagious, and so he's not been able to go to work. Praise the Lord, he has a job. He can work from home, and he's not been able to come to church because, you know, if it's infectious and it spreads, and, but praise the Lord, we got the online, so uh, there's a few more watching online, Brother Mike, than what you see here, and then maybe some others might walk in uh, while you're going if they get off work late and come on. So it's good to have the wards with us tonight, Brother Mike and Miss Mona Ward. Uh, I was thinking about telling Miss Mona what Mary Ann said. She said, she's so beautiful. She has aged phenomenally. <laughs> she said, there's no way that woman's 40. No way. <laughs> and so I added that last part, but the other parts were really her words. And so, amen. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, they didn't say anything about you, Brother Mike. I don't know. I don't know. I taught, I taught my girls, just keep that in. You know, the handsome guys, just keep it in. Keep it in. And uh, uh, how's your shoulder? Okay. And your neck? Because I remember last time you went to see Tubio, didn't you? And he did that. Yeah, he nearly killed you. And, I, and then I wondered after that if there was any, did, did you ever get any relief from that or anything? Or did you get a follow-up? Okay. All right. Brother Daniel, good to see you walk in back there. And so, uh, Brother Mike, is, they're in for a funeral. Is the funeral tomorrow? Friday. Friday, okay. So they'll be staying with us tonight and tomorrow night in the prophet's chamber. He just uh, reached out to me Sunday and then confirmed yesterday and said, uh, can, can I come to church and update the folks? And I said, Brother, you sure can. And so uh, we'll be hearing from Brother Mike here in just a moment. And church, you pray for him as he comes. Our missions conference starts in a week and a half. Who can believe that? It starts in a week and a half, so on the 20th. And uh, is it the 20th? 21st, yes. The 20th is the day before that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's what they get around here. You know, come on. And so uh, the 21st, and then we have our work day coming up this Saturday. And so looking forward to that as well. All right, Brother Mike, you come on and talk to us about it. It's good to see you. I just got to shake your hand on the way. I, I came back to the fellowship hall, but you guys were already in the room. So. Yeah. And thank God you. bless you, Brother. Thank you. Wow, what a joy it is to be here once again. My wife and I had the privilege of being a part of your uh, mission conference last spring. And uh, our first opportunity to be back since then but thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor, for having us. Thank you for the nice, very nice room. And um, what brought us here to town on this occasion, um, my wife has a sister that lives in Houston, somewhere around here, 30 minutes away. She said, wherever you go in this area, it's 30 minutes. So, uh, so anyway, uh, she had a uh, real close friend that uh, passed away uh, Sunday morning, I think, uh, had cancer. And um, my wife's, my mother-in-law, my wife's mother, passed away suddenly last summer. And um, so she's no longer around to come and help when something like that takes place. So my wife is stepping in her mom's shoes to be with her sister for a little while. Uh, she has no one else around, no other family here. And uh, so it didn't matter if I came or not, but as long as she came. But usually if she comes, I'm, I'm somewhere nearby. So, uh, and I really can't understand, preacher, why I wasn't mentioned in that compliment earlier. I mean, uh, really, yeah. Uh, well, I have aged. <laughs> Yeah, we have three children. My oldest, our oldest son, because uh, we're all kind of practical jokers, but he'll he'll see a picture of my wife and myself, and he'll respond by saying, "Wow, mom looks so young," and dad, dad, doesn't mom look so young? <laughs> uh, so anyway. There's one in every crowd, but, uh, you know, I'll get over it. Don't worry about it. I'll get over it. 
But uh, last time we were here, I, I think I told you my wife and I live and travel in a 40-foot coach, a bus. And uh, when we were here last time, it was out in New Mexico for repairs. Uh, we did get it back. We got it back in August of this past year. And uh, praise God, it has been running well. Uh, transmission is staying in it and doing its purpose, its job. And uh, thank you so much for praying for us, your help and your support, not only for that, but for our ministry and our service to the Lord uh, means so very much to us, more than my wife and I have words to say. Uh, thank you so much uh, for allowing us to be a part of your missions uh, program. Uh, things are going well in the work. Of course, the situation in the Middle East has hindered some things uh, and continues to, but still we're able to keep going, and we thank God for that. I'll give you a little bit of an update, and then I'll show you some pictures from uh, some of the last trips that we've made. Uh, in Egypt now, we have 16 churches. Our goal was to have 15 for some time. And uh, praise God, the Lord's given us 16, and uh, the possibility of having two more after that. Uh, our next trip, uh, Lord willing, is in June of this year. Our plans are to go to Egypt. We have a conference scheduled there with our, our pastors and their families, and uh, it'll be a great, great meeting. A couple of pastors, I think, from the states are coming, and so we're looking forward to a wonderful Time we're building, uh, you'll see it on the, the video or the pictures here in a moment, it's not a video, uh, the new building that we're building there for our main church. Uh, I think I shared before, but anyway, the, uh, up until just recently, all the churches that we established there uh, were in high-rise buildings. They build these high-rise buildings 13, 14 stories high. You purchase one level. Uh, which would be for normally an apartment, and then you remodel it and have your church there. Well, Egypt now has a law or rule that you can't have a church in a residential building. It has to be on its own, uh, in, a, in its own building, so to speak. And so God, uh, through a couple in Virginia, provided uh, funds for us. We were able to, already had the property, we were able to build this, uh, uh, this building. It's about three or four stories. Uh, one level will be the church, one level will be a Bible college teaching area, one level will be dormitories where men can stay when they come for meetings from other countries, and it'll be a great, great work. We do plan to meet in that in June, and the dedication will be sometime later in the year, but uh, God's continuing to bless in the work in uh, Egypt. Praise the Lord for that. In Sudan, uh, not such a happy report. Uh, they have been a in a civil war uh, for some time and just about destroyed the country. And it's within themselves. Uh, special forces against the military and going back and forth. And um, all of our pastors and their families have been displaced from their work. Some of our churches have been burned uh, they've taken over some of the places, the churches and the uh, uh, pastors' homes for their own use. Uh, they had, our, our, our people had to literally flee for their lives, uh, some of them with bullets whizzing past them. Uh, many of them fled to Egypt and uh, are staying there until things settle back. We hope in the near future they can return to their homeland and their churches and ministries and uh, continue on. But even in the midst of all of that, the Lord was still saving souls there. And we praise God for it. And uh, pray for those people. Uh, really, really up against uh, the oppression, the persecution, uh, the things in their country going uh, as it has, and pray for them. South Sudan, you'll see some of those pictures in a moment. Uh, we were there last December and had a great, uh, great meeting. Uh, and the school is doing good. The church is doing well. 
and we thank God for it. They've had their own uh, amount of civil wars as well. Presently, it's not anything like that going on. Uh, but we still will go in a few days and come back out. We don't stay or tarry long uh, in areas such as that, but we are able to go in there, and we thank God for it. In Iraq, um, we put, uh, I think I shared with you, we were planning to, to build a school and have been for some time. We already had property bought and was ready to begin, and uh, the government changed. It changes quite often, uh, a lot in the Middle East. And when, when it changed, they told us the property that we had was not big enough, was not large enough. Uh, strange to us and for whatever reason uh, but so we had to uh, hold put on hold of the construction there began looking for other property God led us to a piece of property in a more high level area more visible uh, area a very valuable piece of property and we thank God for it uh, we were able to sell the previous property to the very dollar that we needed to buy the new property and uh, just felt God was leading us in that direction. And we had the plans all in hand, and then this conflict has come up, uh, which uh, involves Iraq a good bit as well in the area. And so for now, we're putting on hold the, the building of the school. Uh, the school that we were going to start would have about 300 students. The one we go to, the new property, would house about 1,500 students. And uh, it, it'd be a great, great opportunity. It'll be something that uh, certainly would be a great testimony for the Lord. And we do believe God led us there to that property. And so the Lord has something in mind. Pray that soon that we can begin that project again. Uh, our churches there are doing well. We have now four radio stations that covers about... Uh, 80% uh, of the country of Iraq, somewhere from uh, uh, 6 million to 10 million people a day uh, hear or have access to the gospel in that country alone to the, by radio. And uh, thank the Lord for these opportunities that God has given to us. Pray for the work in uh, Iraq, if you would. Our plans on our last trip over there in December... Uh, was to go there, but since the conflict, uh, tensions are, are escalating there, and we thought it best not to, so we haven't been in there the last uh, trip or two, hopefully sometime this year perhaps, but we'll see how that goes. And uh, then in Lebanon, Lebanon is now involved somewhat in the, the situation with Israel uh, because Hezbollah is uh, involved. And Hezbollah has a stronghold in Lebanon. And uh, so Israel is returning, um, you know, the attacks there to some parts. Well, one of our pastors in a certain part of, of Lebanon, uh, they were in the midst of a service and had to, had to stop and, and uh, disband and flee because of the things going on right around them. Uh, it's just... Uh, a difficult thing. Pray for these people. They have really, in this country, really faced a lot of, a, a lot of obstacles. Uh, but they're faithful, and they're going on, and uh, serving the Lord, and preaching the gospel, and uh, pray that God will continue to bless them. In Syria, we still have two churches there. In Turkey, we have, uh, have one, and uh, the brother that was leading that work is in Canada presently uh, getting his uh, uh, Bible education and learning English, uh, which will be a great help for him to do so. But he also has a podcast that he uh, sends back to Iran. And he has in Iran about uh, 5 million followers in that country. And he preaches the gospel to them every week. What, a, what an opportunity uh, God has opened there for this brother and pray for him. And then in Yemen, we have, uh, have one there, and the brother is doing well, the folks there. 
I get to see them usually when we have a meeting in Egypt. He, uh, he and his wife will come, and we get to spend some time together. Uh, he can't speak any English, and uh, I don't speak much Arabic, but I'm so lovable, preacher, he just loves to be around me. <laughs> and he'll give me a big bear hug every time he sees me, and we just enjoy company together. It's kind of odd and strange, but still a uh, great, great brother doing a wonderful work there for the Lord. Pray for them. Uh, again, uh, uh, Yemen is a country that's not, not uh, favorite, fav- favoring the gospel being preached. Uh, in fact, they would, uh, they would remove your head from your body if they found you doing it uh, easily. Anyone like us, they imprisoned this brother for some time, for two years, and uh, he was tortured and beaten, uh, trying to get other information from him. By God's grace, he never shared that information. They finally uh, turned him loose, but his family disowned him. He had to go to another place. They took his home, threw his family out in the street while he was in prison. Uh, what a story. What a story. But the brother's faithful. And he's uh, going on to serve the Lord. Pray for those people, if you would. Not long ago, he had some, uh, a surgical procedure done. And the doctor doing the procedure was a radical Muslim. So he did not know what this doctor might do to him if he was put under anesthetic. So he had the procedure done without any anesthesia. They're growing pretty tough over there, preacher. It's, it's really, uh, pray for this brother. I'm in awe of someone like uh, he and his wife and their service to the Lord. God bless them in all that they do. This past February, we were in uh, West Africa. We go there usually uh, that time of year because it's not the rainy season. It rains about seven months of the year in those areas, and we like to go when it's not raining. By the way, it was monsoon season coming down here, I think. Uh, rained uh, in our place. We've been in Arkansas for a couple of days, and it started there Monday evening. Oh, I see you, you survived the eclipse. <laughs> wasn't, that a, wasn't that a big deal? But anyway, uh, it started raining Monday evening. It rained all the way up. It was raining when we left uh, there this morning. And rain on us uh, several times coming down this way. But it's springtime. And so April showers bring May flowers. So anyway, we'll see, see how that goes. But anyway, we went to uh, West Africa. Uh, and in Liberia, we had two graduations. I'll show you some of those pictures here in just a moment. What an experience. One of those places. And I'll tell you about it as we get to those pictures. And then we had an uh, ordination for three preachers in Ghana, and the Lord blessed, and we saw people saved, and just a great, great work. Uh, it's just wonderful to see what God's doing in uh, these needed places around the world. Thank you for being a part of it. Such a blessing. And everything that you'll see here, everything I've just talked about, you as a church have a part as though you were there doing it yourself. Thank you so, so very much. So we'll get to the pictures, and then if you have uh, any questions. Uh, now, this doesn't have any sound, and we'll go one picture at a time. And, uh, but if you have any questions along the way, we'll be glad to answer any of those that we can. I don't want to stand in anybody's way. Brother, I'll be in your way over here. Wanna, can you see? Okay. All right, uh, this again is from our, our trip. Uh, some of it was last uh, December, and then the other part was just in February. <clears throat> I think it'll start in South Sudan. We have the first picture up. This, is, uh, this was the last, our church in South Sudan is a very large school, several hundred. And this was the last day of school and it was on a Saturday. They were having a meeting there, and all, kind of like an awards thing. And uh, we were speaking. There was probably, probably 
four or five hundred people there, and they had these tents set up, and all of these were under it. And uh, see this little guy, his graduation gown and such, and they, they were excited about it for a while. And so, okay, next picture. They had a little skit that, that they did, some of them before we spoke. Uh, Brother Fagali, who I work in the ministry with, uh, brought the main message, and I spoke after that. And uh, they did a little, uh, kind of a little skit about some things here, uh, about serving the Lord and that sort of thing. It was, it was quite good. And under this tent are the, the parents, the family members here. These are the little fellas. Back over here on this side, uh, immediately to my left are where all the teachers sat. And then over next to them were the high schoolers. And that's all important for a moment, okay? Next picture. Okay, there's uh, family members here all gathered under there. Okay, next picture. There's the little guys. Man, they look thrilled, don't they? <laughs> okay, next picture. Okay, here, here is me. And uh, this is some kind of a, I don't know what all's in there, but there's some goodies of some sort. But there's the little ones, there's the families, here's the teachers, and then right beside them are the high schoolers. When I got up there, it was kind of a lull. And I'm thinking in my mind, uh, somebody needs to liven this crowd up. And I thought, well, I guess I'll do it. So when I got up there, I thought, well, I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to try it. And so I began to talk about this being the last day of school. This guy here is an interpreter with me, and he didn't know really how to act and what I was doing. But uh, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. So I, I, first of all, had all the high schoolers to stand up. They didn't know, they didn't know uh, what I was going to do. And I didn't know what all I was going to do, but I was going to do something. And uh, so I had them all stand up, and I said, this is the last day of school. And I want you to repeat after me exactly as I say it. And they're looking at me, and strangely. And so I said, okay, this is what you're going to say. Today is the last day of school. Oh, yeah. And you're going to say it just like that. I said, let's, let's practice it. So I ran through a practice run with them. And they did pretty good. I said, all right, now we're going to say it for real. And I want you to really come out with it. And uh, they got a hold of it. Finally got a hold of it. it. It was fun. I had them do it two or three times. <clears throat> and then I went over here to the little guys. And you don't have to prod them too much. They'll get in with you. And so I, I said, all right, those high schoolers think they're really cool, but you guys are the really cool ones. And so I had them all stand up, and I did something with sim similar with them. Last day of school, yeah! And they got with me, and they was good. And then I had the teachers stand up. This was about to get interesting. And I had the teachers to stand up, and they stood up, and uh, they was looking at me like, are you sure you want to do this? And uh, so anyway, they went through with it, and got it okay. And uh, then I had the families to stand up, the parents and grandparents and everybody stand up. And I went through with that, and by the time all of that was said and done, that place came alive. They ate that up. They just thought this was the funnest thing. They'd never been to anything like that. And it was wonderful. I don't know if they're still doing it now, but they did it that day. And it was wonderful. Wonderful. And the pastor thanked me after I came over and said, I didn't know what, he might scold me. I didn't know what he did. But he, he, got, he got in with it. And it was a lot of fun. And that whole place just kind of began to roar together. And uh, it, it, was, it was great. But uh, praise God, these little ones are being trained, not only educated, but given... Uh, teaching in the Bible, the Word of God, and uh, what an what a opportunity is ours that God has opened for us in South Sudan. Pray that we can continue. Our hopes are 
uh, to put a radio antenna there and have a uh, uh, radio program going that would, uh, that would reach the capital city of Juba and surrounding area, probably about 300,000 people every day with the gospel, and uh, then also to add our Bible college training here. And so a lot of things on, the, on uh, tap for there, we hope, and pray with that God will enable us. Okay, next one. Here they are. They're, uh, you can see them all in, in, in one of these pictures here in a minute. You can see their necks really stretching. They want, there I am, way up in there. Okay, next picture. Here you go. See them standing up and stretching their neck. They want to make sure they hear exactly what I'm saying and involved in it. And uh, wow, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Okay, next picture. This is on Sunday in the church, and uh, this fellow here again is interpreting. Tell you a story of what happened to me, not this trip, but a previous one. Uh, in this building, uh, it's a nice building. The Lord allowed us to build that for them a few years ago. There are doorways, but no door. And so anything and anyone can come and go in that door at any time. I'm up here preaching. And this was a few years ago. This dog comes walking in. And he comes right here and sits down and looks up at me. And he sits there, it seems, several minutes. I don't know how, it probably was not as long as it seemed to me. But he sat there for a good while looking at me, never took his eyes off of me. Just sat there like this looking. And so as I just continued on preaching, in a few moments... Preacher, he had this look on his face like, I've heard that before. He turned and came back over here and lay down under this front row of seats and was there the rest of the service. I thought, what a good Baptist dog. <laughs> but anyway, uh, these folk, they were really interested. Next picture, please. You can see them all sitting up, listening. Uh, you have their attention when you're there. And good, uh, good number in church that day. Uh, next picture, they're all, some of them videoing it, you can see there, and they are listening to what you're saying, and you have their attention. What, a, what an opportunity. Usually we have several saved in, in services like this, and uh, thank God for every single one. Praise the Lord for it. Okay, next one. These are the teenagers. They sat right here in this uh, little amen corner, we might call it. <coughs> they are also the choir. And they'll sing, my, my, I love to hear them sing. They do such a great job, and they'll sing out, and uh, for the Lord, what a great blessing that is. And the little fellows, when they come in, they got this little two-step that they do as they come in. It takes them a little while to get in, and then they do it as they go out. But once they're in, and they're in, there's several lines of them here, the little guys, they'll sing, I'm telling you, they'll sing out, and do a great job, but uh, what, a, what a wonderful blessing. Okay. All right, we're preaching away there. All right, okay, next one. This is the building that we're building in Egypt, the new building. See, it has uh, one, two, three levels, maybe four. And uh, one, uh, this level here, I think, will be the church. This level will be for the Bible college, and this one will be the dormitories. And... Uh, this was back in December, what it looked like. And now, Lord willing, in June, uh, it'll be finished enough we can, we can have services in it. And we look forward to that. What a great blessing. You'll see their architecture is not quite, you know, the standards of ours, but my, what a nice building. God provided that for them. Okay, next one. This is the, the front of it. We have a really a nice doorway here. And they really won't need parking because... Nobody has a vehicle. Uh, they'll, they'll come, uh, those little uh, uh, moped little things, and others will walk and take them a while to get there. But once they get there, they want to stay there for a while. Uh, they're not ready to leave, you know, right after they get there. They want you to, you know, preach and go for a long time and sing. Oh, my, they love to sing. And it'll be a great, great blessing. And so we thank the Lord for that. Okay, next picture. This was our conference last that we had with the, our brethren. 
so our pastors and others that are here, their wives and families are gathered as well. <coughs> this is Brother Fagali. With, do you know him, preacher? Okay. Uh, he's originally from Lebanon uh, and came here, been in the States for many, many, many years. Started this ministry a long time ago, and the Lord continues to bless. This is our main pastor there uh, that pastors the church that I just showed you that we're building, uh, Brother Farah and his family. Great brother. What a, what a faithful brother. And uh, this brother here, Brother Mossad, is probably the most productive pastor that we have. And if you were to see him, you wouldn't think that at all. Uh, not that he looks pretty common, but I mean, you just wouldn't, if we were to say, okay, let's choose the most productive, you, would, you probably wouldn't choose him. But he's in what we call Upper Egypt. And uh, in Upper Egypt, we're in uh, Cairo, Alexandria, and Upper Egypt. And uh, he, he is one of the churches there. We were preaching in his church one time. I don't know if I told this story. But I like to hear me tell it, so I'll tell it again. Uh, I'm joking, by the way, if y'all, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, we were at his church, and he was in an old building. has several levels. Uh, he lived, he and his family, on one level. And the church was kind of in the basement part of the building. And uh, so we were in his home and we're having church that night and I was going to preach he said I believe the people are gathering and they'll be praying let's go on down and so we walk down and there's people a few people gathered in and they begin to pray and they don't pray like like we do and say brother would you lead us and then you lead us and then you they just take off somebody takes off praying and then when they finish somebody else and it's all in Arabic but I'm telling you we just walked up among them and began praying with them and in a few moments, I'm telling you, God walked in that room. It was just phenomenal. And uh, people began coming in. And they filled up that room to capacity. And then over here on the side, they had two or three rows here. There was people on the steps uh, in the hallway going out. There was people everywhere in there. We had one little corner here where we were sitting. And they had a table. And when they sang... They didn't have a, uh, an instrument or anything. They had one fellow there, and he would, he would tap on the table like this to kind of give them the melody, how the song was going to go, the beat. And then they would just take off singing. And my, my, what they would sing. And uh, so it got time for me to, uh, to preach, and Brother Fagali said, I'm going to say a word, then I'll introduce you. I said, okay. So he gets up. He interprets for me in the Arabic. And so he got up, and I could tell that he was about to say my name. And so about the time that he said my name, and I stood up to go right there behind that little table, right out here at the doorway. Remember, there's doorway, but no door. Right out here at the doorway, there was a donkey tied. They don't have cars, but a lot of them have donkeys. And this donkey, I guess, got caught up in the spirit. And about the time he said my name to come over there and, and begin to, to preach, that donkey started chiming in. E -aw, e -aw, e -aw. I said, well, I guess that's my introduction. That'll, that'll work. Uh, but that was in his church. We had about probably 20, almost 30 people saved that night. And uh, he done a, and we, so he needed a new building. We bought the property, and he raised the, the money for the building, they built that building, and now they are wall-to-wall -wall people. They, have, they run about <clears throat> 200 or more children, just children, and then the adults, doing a great work. He told me on this last trip his wife has cancer. I did not know that. And she's gone through the treatments and such. She was not able to be with us on this meeting. She's always there. Usually helps sing and such. Uh, pray for them, if you would. Mossad is his name. And uh, he has two or three boys. One of them was going to come to the States to a Bible college. And uh, I'm not sure if that's still in the making, but pray for them. They surely appreciate it. Uh, this brother, Fammy, he's in... Uh, 
Uh, he's in Alexandria. This brother right here also is in Alexandria, and uh, several of them in Upper Egypt, doing a tremendous work for the Lord, and we thank God for each and every one of these brothers. Faithful men. Faithful men. Thank God for them. Okay, next picture. Okay, these are, are better look at our pastors here. Uh, again, this is a brother from Yemen that I was talking about earlier. Uh, what, what a tremendous witness for the Lord. Uh, this is one of our pastors. These are Brother Mossad. This brother here, uh, up until recently, we had, to, we had to borrow some of their influence. To be in Egypt and to operate as we were, you had to have uh, uh, so many churches. And so his organization, uh, they're scriptural, but his organization loaned us a part of their umbrella, so to speak, so that we could operate till we got the 15 churches, and now we have 16, and we're on our own. But this brother uh, comes to, to our meetings, and he helps speak, and he's a, he's a good man. Brother Fami in uh, Alexandria. This brother here, uh, Brother Amir, what a tremendous brother. His father started a church uh, in a certain part of Cairo, and uh, radical Muslims assassinated him. And when they assassinated his father, he stepped up and he said, I'll take my dad's church. And he took his dad's church, and now, uh, and every time I've, we've been there, and now uh, he has so many people, he doesn't have room to put them. On the last trip, I took him uh, a uh, projector where he can project from this service to those meeting upstairs where they can see. He moved them up, upstairs where they can see and be a part of the service because in the main uh, auditorium he doesn't have room for them. He also started a church in another part of the city. He still pastored that one and started the other one. And uh, I preached there on a Thursday evening. And when we arrived, uh, the building was so full, people were standing through the door outside. They had to move, it's like water's parting. They had to move over so we could get in and walk down through there. And when we got up on the platform, people were sitting on the edge of the platform. Uh, the side section was full. All of these people, the, the, the auditorium was filled. People standing around the wall. It was a new church. This guy had started it. And I preached that night on the coming of the Lord. Brother Fagali interpreted for me, and he took the invitation, and when he uh, asked them, those that would like to be saved, it was over a hundred people stood up to ask Jesus into their heart, and to pray out loud to receive Christ as Savior. This guy doing a tremendous work. Devil's been after him, but pray for him if you would, he and his family. There's uh, uh, our main pastor. This is in, uh, uh, this one here is in Alexandria. Great brethren. And at the end of every meeting, you see this cake? One thing I like about these guys, they like to eat sweets. <laughs> and at the end of every meeting that we have here, they'll bring in one, they'll, they'll get a cake. And that thing is so large, it's not needed near that big, but they'll get this big cake. And then they'll gather around it and take pictures, and then they'll go slicing that thing up and uh, passing it around. What a great, great blessing. I wish you could meet these guys. They are just tremendous brethren. We thank God for them. Okay, next picture. <coughs> this is in Monrovia. And uh, in Monrovia, we have two schools. We have the grade school, which is these little guys, and there's about 100 or so there. And then we have another school, and, and there's a couple hundred over there. But uh, they are anxiously waiting for me to come. Now, not because they think I'm so special. But every time I go there, I carry bags of blow pops. Everybody know what a blow pop is? Last year, I carried 500 blow pops and didn't have enough. This year I carried 650. 
And these guys are anxious. You see, one, uh, one blow pop to them is like Christmas morning. And they are thrilled to see me walk in because I usually have that bag. And my wife puts these things in, uh, what do you call it, a freezer bag. What? Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags. And I carry them in a red duffel bag. And when I come in with those things, all eyes are on me. And they're waiting. Okay, next picture. There's the other side. Look at these little guys. You think they're not, they're not armed and loaded? They are ready to go. And uh, they put on a little program for us. And next picture. All of these guys had a part in the program. Uh, would say something or read something or welcome us. Look at that, that, that expression. Isn't that meanness? <laughs> I'm telling you. I love these little guys so much and always thrilled to see them. And uh, what a great blessing. Next picture. This little girl is the queen of the school. <laughs> Look at that. I said, I saw her with all, I said, what is that? And the pastor said, she's the queen of the school. Got this, the name of the school here in the year. I said, I got to have a picture with her. So she came up and had this picture with me. What a precious little thing. What a blessing. And uh, I don't know if she'll ever remember that, but I will. And I appreciate it. Okay, next picture. This little guy, you're talking about armed and loaded. Look here. This is at the other school. And uh, these little ones, that just captures my heart when I see them. And uh, he, he didn't know if he wanted his picture made with me or not, but as long as he had that in hand, it was okay. And okay, next picture. And see, we had enough this time. Some of them got two. See this, this one right here has two? And they're all holding them up. And so last year when I was here, the older ones like this, didn't get one. I didn't have enough. Ran out. This year, I had enough that they could all have two. See, this one got two, two fingers up. I said, how many of y'all got? And I said, I got two. So they made up for last year and had for this year as well. Okay, next picture. There they are. I like this section over here. These little ones, they, they are just special. And they all got those. I have them. I have them hold up those suckers, you know, for the picture and say thank you and such and, uh, and all. But they, uh, some of them don't wait till then. I think this young lady was already consuming. They get that wrapper off and they go at it. And I don't blame them. I probably would do the same. Next picture. This was one of our graduations there at, uh, in Monrovia at our main church. This is the the one who started the pastor, who started the church, was there for many years. His father uh, is the one that started the Baptist work in Liberia. And uh, we'll show you pictures of the church that his father started many years ago here in a moment. But uh, that's him. This is Brother Fagali. Now, he would not want me showing you this. You don't know him. But you see that hat? He said, when I go for graduations overseas, I take the robe, but I don't ever take a hat. I don't like them things anyway. And so he told uh, the pastor here, he said, uh, you know, I brought the robe, but I don't have a hat. The pastor said, oh, no, you must have a hat. For what purpose? He said, uh, well, I didn't bring one. He said, we'll make you one. Never trust when they say that. They made this. You see how small mine looks? Look how big his looks. <laughs> he hated that thing. But you'll see it better here in a moment. Next picture. These are all the graduates that we graduated. <laughs> Look at that. And uh, they all were received. Okay, next. Here we are marching in. Please don't tell him I showed you these pictures. <laughs> don't tell him I showed you these pictures. Okay, next. That's the Sanhedrin right there. 
And uh, we're getting ready for the service. Okay, next picture. This is the crowd that came. Brother Fogali's preaching the message to for the graduation. And it was a house full of people. And I don't know if you can see these folk right here, the, the white people. They uh, were missionaries. I forget now where they were from, but they heard about the, the meeting, the service, and they came for that day. And a uh, great blessing. Okay, next picture. Now, this was interesting because I would say their names. That was a great challenge. I would say their names, and then I would hand the degree to him, and he would then in turn hand it to the graduates. And uh, nobody, nobody corrected me on any name I said. They probably just said, well, just let it go. Okay, next picture. Yep, there he is. Okay, next picture. We uh, had it a, extended our Bible college. This is in Monrovia. But we extended it up to central Liberia. It's about four hours one way uh, driving. These are students in that extension, Bible college extension there. And they came for this graduation just to see how it is. And they're involved there learning and training and what a blessing Expanding out further, doing more for the Lord. Okay, next one. This is in a place called Tapita. Tapita, if you go to the end of the world and turn left, you'll come to Tapita. Preacher, we, we rode on some of the most ungodly roads I have ever been on. When we arrived there, we, we were going to leave that morning coming from Monrovia here, eight hours one way. <coughs> when we set out to go, right out the edge of the city, the road was blocked. The military had the road blocked. The reason they had it blocked was uh, there's a new president in the country, and the fellow he had uh, given the task to be defense minister or whatever they call him, they didn't like him. And so they, they blocked all the roads around until that guy either resigned or they changed it. So we couldn't get past there. We went back, waited till about 4 o'clock. We heard that guy stepped aside. The military was happy. They unblocked the road, and we were able to go. We arrived in Tapita something after midnight. To be on those roads in the daytime is quite a task, but to go at night. And when we arrived, we stayed in a, uh, a guest house, I think the hospital, or a hospital there, <coughs> operates this place, I'm not sure. Roaches about this long. And they greeted us when we came in. And so we, uh, we stayed the night there, got up the next morning, and came for this graduation. This is the largest Baptist church in Liberia. The brother I showed you a moment ago who started the church in Monrovia, his father started this church. He's in heaven now. Uh, but what a, this is the largest, see this crowd, you can get just kind of an idea. Brother Fagali, see, no hat. He told this preacher, he said, I am not wearing that hat. He said, it's fine, you don't have to. So I said, if you're not wearing one, I'm not. So anyway, okay, next picture. You can see the, the crowd here gathered. It was a house filled with people. All right, next picture. Now, these ladies, I'm not sure exactly their purpose, but they, they were serving in some manner. They all dressed alike. They're not the choir, because you'll see them in a moment. But they were all there, very supportive, very helpful. And, okay, next picture. This is the choir. And the choir sang several songs. They did a wonderful job. The lady right there is the pastor's wife. And uh, what wonderful people. We thank the Lord uh, for the privilege of being there. I don't know that I'd ever want to go back, but I'm glad I was there this time. Okay, next picture. This is back in, uh, this is in Ghana. Uh, 
in Kamasi, Ghana, uh, which is up north of Accra. This is where most of our works are in Ghana. And this is our main church there. This is Pastor Charles, uh, who started this church. I had the privilege, the very first trip I ever made with Brother Fagali years ago, uh, we came here and there was a dedication for this building. They just built it. And so that was many years ago. And we're having an ordination for these three preachers sitting over here. And uh, a great service. Again, good crowd. And I spoke, and then Brother Fagali brought the main message, and a tremendous time. Okay, next picture. <coughs> these are the brethren that we, we didn't ordain these ladies, but these are wives of these two. This brother's wife was out of the country, I think, uh, for some kind of meeting. But we ordained these three, and uh, I've been in all their churches and spoke there. Tremendous work that they're doing for the Lord. And uh, glad we could be a part of their ordination service and meeting. Okay, next picture. This is my favorite church to go to in Kamasi, Ghana. It's one of our churches. And um, the pastor of this church and the pastor of the church I just showed you pictures of started out together in that one building we were just in. And then he split off and he came over and started this church. My, what an exciting place. I love to come here. This guy's not sick. He's praying. And if you can see it close, this lady right here is on her face. This lady right here is on her face. This lady right here is on her face. And this lady and this lady are praying, not on their face, but they are praying. And when I walked in and I saw those, I thought, we're going to have a meeting here today. What a tremendous time. I love going to this church, <coughs> and the Lord has certainly blessed and is blessing uh, this work, and I, I just enjoy going there. Good spirit, good number, great service. Next picture, please. You can see again the crowd that's here over on both sides. Okay, next picture. This is their music section. Uh, they have the keyboards, they have the drums, they have the bass. And they have the singers, and preacher, everything is wide open. They have one setting, one setting only, and everything in Africa, wherever you go, it's wide open. There's no turning it down, it's turning it up. And they get with the program. They, uh, uh, it, it, it'll, it'll rattle your, but it's good, it's good. Okay, next. And when it gets going pretty good, these ladies come and they make a little circle right here. And they're just, you know, that's how they worship. They don't worship like we do. And that's how they worship. I love to see the offering time come. <coughs> when we have offering here, may not be that way in your church, but when we have offering here, it's kind of like a funeral. Parting with a dear friend, you know. When they're there, they roll this box out, about as the height, it would be about half the size of your uh, communion table here. And it's on wheels. They roll it out and put the lid open. And then the music section over here will crank it up. Did I mention that it was loud? They'll crank it up. And it is a toe tapper. And people will start coming. And they don't have much to put in there, but what they have, they are so excited. Smile ear to ear, and they'll come up and drop it in that box, and then they'll make their way back down there to the seat. And then this side over here will do it. I love that. It's my favorite part of the service. I love to see that taking place and see how happy they are to be able to give to the Lord. Okay, next picture. And uh, I think this is the last one. But anyway, they are excited about coming and being in church together. And they don't care who knows it. They just enjoy their time 
together. And I had a great blessing. We had, I think we had four people saved there that morning. And what a tremendous blessing being with those people. I think that was the last one. Uh, anybody have a question about anything that I showed here? June, we're going to Egypt. Mm -hmm. We have the conference there, and then also to begin meeting in the uh, new building that's there. Probably about, uh, usually it's close to about three weeks, two and a half, something like that. Especially if we go to another country, and I don't know yet that we're going to any other one, but, uh, you know, it's possible. Amen missions is what my wife and I call our African Middle Eastern nations. So we're in eight different countries in the Middle East and then two in West Africa. So that's, uh, we just call it Amen missions. <coughs> yes, yeah, for the Bible college or, or schools, yeah. They're from that area. Uh, most of the teachers were trained by us in our, in our college. In fact, in Monrovia now, we have, we're at the point that uh, uh, all of our teachers have, have the degrees that uh, came from our school and uh, have been taught and trained that way. And then our pastors are doing the same. <coughs> it's a great uh, opportunity. I'm sorry? Are there, is there work for them to do in the other areas? Not much. Uh, the economy in, in Liberia is not very good. If you have a job, if you have a job, you might make like, you know, 75, maybe really good job, $100 a month. And that's about it. We try to uh, pay our teachers the equivalent and we trust the Lord to help us. We have a couple that sends us money for the school. And after it builds up a little bit, my wife and I put some with it, we send it to pay the teachers. The more we can do that, then we don't have to charge the students to come because they don't have it. If they don't have it to pay, they just won't go. And somebody will have them out in the, in the hot sun on the street corner or an intersection, you know, selling trinkets. And it's not very costly to go to the school, you know, 8 to $10 a month, but still, they just don't have the money to do it. Like I said, a blow pop's like Christmas morning. So that kind of gives you an idea of what they, they have or don't have. So. Okay, any others? No questions. Okay. Thank you, preacher. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for that. <coughs> and so that's a little peek into where our meeting might go. And then we'll take up prayer requests. Our work day is this Saturday. So it's from 9.30 to 3.30. We'll have lunch at noon. Uh, we're going to be focusing, like I said. Now, we've got some branches to pick up. They may be picked up before then. We had a windstorm today. Thank you, son. We had a windstorm today, uh, this morning. We rainstormed last night. 
and then windstorm today, and it blew down some of these branches that we were trying to figure out, how in the world are we going to get them down out of these trees? And we'd try to throw ropes and pull, I mean, you just weren't getting them down. The big one that I was really thinking about, uh, there it is, it's on the ground. You know, I came over this morning, I went back to get some more coffee to the house, and when I walked out, I was like, oh, wow, there it is. And there are some other branches, things like that, so praise the Lord for that. So we're going to be focused on the grounds. Isaac's going to be changing oil, maintenance in the zero turns, right? So we got the three zero turns, changing the oil filters, stuff on that, annual maintenance. Uh, there'll be mowing if it's dry enough. You'll probably mow on Friday. That's the normal mow day. And then we'll do that on Saturday. Uh, we're supposed to be feeding beds and different things like that around the property. And then the fellowship hall will be the focus. Uh, in the last work day, this building, then the fellowship hall, this one, getting the dorms ready. Uh, getting the fellowship hall cleaned up and everything nice, uh, ready for missions conference. And then we got missionaries showing up, confirmed. The Barfields will be here Saturday. Uh, the Copleys said they're coming in Friday. He said, we'll be there Friday afternoon. So really looking forward to seeing them. And then I'm not sure when the Wilsons are going to be here. Uh, he hasn't confirmed exactly when he's going to arrive yet, but they're looking forward to being here. And so continue to pray for them, the Copleys, the Wilsons, and the Barfields. Miss Cindy, he said, is, uh, I talked to Brother, Brother Tyrone uh, yesterday, I think it was, or Monday, I can't remember, one of those days, and he said, when was it, hon? Yesterday, and he said that she's, you know, back home out of the hospital, she's had a tough go at it, and she's looking forward to coming, they're all, the whole family's planning on being here, and he said, please continue to pray. They never have isolated it. They don't know what's going on. said they're just trying to watch what she eats. And, and Brother Mike, she's been uh, vomiting for months now, not able to hold anything. That she's been in the hospital for extended periods of time, multiple times. And, you know, they're church planners in Texarkana. So you came, you know. Yeah, amen. Okay, so you know them. And, uh, yeah, and, and she's been in there several times. And uh, just got out. They were there in Texarkana, and then they finally got her into Dallas. And they weren't able to, you know, hoping maybe they'd be able to figure something. They ain't been able to figure it out. And uh, odd thing, it seems like when she goes to the hospital, she gets better. And then when she goes home, it happens again. So we're thinking maybe environmental or something to that effect. They've tried to investigate and rule in, rule out, and they've not been able to come to any conclusions or find any answers. And the rest of the family's fine. So if it's environmental, it just is attacking her. So continue to pray for Miss Cindy Barfield and the Barfields as they come. And then the other missionary families as well. And then uh, missions conference is a week and a half from now. Ladies meeting Sunday after the morning service regarding the food uh, for missions conference. So we're looking forward to that as well. All right. And with that, we'll take up prayer requests. Miss Patty. Uh, Sophia, Sister Sophia. She sent this today to a different chat, but I know she usually wants me to announce it. So her daughter Erica remarried last year, and her father-in-law was so sick, he took his own life. Mm -hmm. They don't know if he was saved. Pray for the adult children. He and so that's Sophia's daughter, husband's dad. because he's the one that took his life, right? The father of the... Let me read it to you again. The father is the one that took his life. Yeah, not the one she married. The right. father of the guy she right. married. Right. So yeah. her father in law. Yeah, so we're, we're praying for the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what she said. So she named some names. Steve and her grandchild, Levi and Nevaeh. N-E-V-A-E-H. sick. He took his life. That was her father-in-law, uh, Sophia's daughter's father-in-law. And, and so that's uh, Steve, Levi, and Nevaeh are who we're praying for. And the other family involved in that. What a tragedy. And they're not sure if he was saved and he was sick. And do you, any idea what kind of sickness? 
No. Okay. Okay, so we'll pray for Sister Sophia Lozano. And then, uh, yes, ma'am. I want to pray for my dad. He was so weak here. He kicked all of the meds last year, and he still did that on Friday. Okay, so pray for Brother Bruce. Uh, Brandon, Miss Katie's dad. That's why he's out today. He's traveling for work, and I know he had some traveling upcoming. I saw him last evening as well. <clears throat> so pray for him as he travels. He's coming home Friday, you said? Yes, probably. Okay, okay. probably coming home Friday. So Katie asked Bethany to come pick her up. Of course, Bethany's sick. So Miss Susie went and picked her up today. So praise the Lord for that. I'm glad you were able to come and be here with us even though Daddy's gone. All right, uh, Brother Bruce, remember to pray for Sister Norma. She has some follow-up doctor's appointments. And then also Brother Jake, as we continue to await results that should be coming in sometime next week. And we had problems. Now, I don't know, you know, most people were gone by that time, but we had problems with the sound system on Sunday. You knew that. And I had to not use the lapel and try to stick to the pulpit mic. And the guys worked and worked and worked and couldn't figure it out, so they called in reinforcements, and Brother Jake shows up with his mask on, and, and he got up there, and he got it fixed. It worked tonight, didn't it? Yeah. So uh, Brother Jake came late Sunday and worked on that after church and got that done. And he said, oh, it's so good to be in here. It feels so good to be here, you know. All right. Any other prayer requests? Good to see Brother Lewis, too. You know, he was taking his pipe fitting course at, at Tulsa, and so we didn't see him on Wednesdays for a long, long time. And then he just finished up that course, and here he is today. So praise the Lord for that. So he of course he passed. <laughs> the, guy's a, the guy's brilliant. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, did somebody have Marianne? Okay, Marianne has four unspokens, and then Samantha's six. Did you go into the office today? Did Joy go with you, or, or did you? Oh, you were able to make it home to get him, okay. Yeah, I'm glad that you didn't want to miss. Uh, I didn't know if you'd be able to make it home in time and then get back, so praise the Lord. I'm, I'm glad you made it. I told Brother Mike when he came up here that uh, you'd probably be slipping in at some point, so it's good to see Joy again. All right. Uh, Brother Jason. We'll pray for uh, Brother Jeff Gates. Bone cancer. And uh, for Sister Ursula caring for him. I know uh, Jeff, he's still, he's still at home and waiting for word from the hospital when he can actually get out and about. Uh, basically, he's at home right now because uh, the stem cell treatment he's been taking has made his immune system weak, so he has to stay home for now. So uh, if we could just pray that he can get word from that hospital so that he can actually get out and about uh, sooner rather than later and uh, be recovered. Okay, so Brother Jeff Yates with the bone cancer, and we prayed for him when he was in the hospital getting the stem cell, and then we heard last week that he was back home. And now he's still at home. He's homebound until he gets the all clear that it's okay for him to go out because the, the treatment uh, affected his, weakened his immune system. So he's got to kind of be isolated for now. And then his sister, Ursula, who's his caregiver. Uh, Brother Nathan? I was going to give you an update on uh, my former pastor of the church. Uh, we went to the funeral on uh, Friday, last Friday. And it was a real beautiful church does have a pastor okay. right now. Uh, somebody that the pastor knew. Um, but it's definitely going to be uh, quite uh, a change. Um, so it's a good number of them. Uh, it, it seemed like a really 
a big shakeup, but uh, they got a pastor now. The family has uh, got plans about what they're going to do um, uh, for the future. Um, and things are working out. <coughs> okay, good, good. So that's uh, Pastor Phil Dunn, Lighthouse Baptist Church in Laporte, and he had cancer. And by the time we heard about it, it was already uh, well progressed in the late stages. And then he passed away. And we heard that report last week. The funeral was just this past Friday. Brother Nathan and his family were able to attend. And uh, the, the church does have a pastor. We were praying about that. And they do have a, a path forward. So praise the Lord for that. God seems to have provided. And then his family, you know, his he leaves behind his family, and they have a plan as well. So it looks like God's hand is in it. And, of course, none of this caught, you know, it, caught, it catches you off guard, but it never catches God off guard. And so praise the Lord for that. And God has things in place. And uh, thank you for that update, Brother Nathan. Sister Lisa. Um, last year, I asked for prayer for my principal, Dr. Kelly um, Machiendo, for her father. Um, so uh, her father passed. They had given him until December, but he lived to be longer than expected. Yeah, he passed yeah. last night. So just pray for her and her family as they drive up to um, Tennessee. Also, another co worker of mine, um, Morelli, Carolina Morelli. Um, her, her grandmother, sorry, um, has um, dementia, and they called her today while they were at work, and um, they've given grandma two weeks. Two weeks. And, and what's her name again? The co-worker? My co-worker. Her name is Carolina Marley. Carolina. Carolina Marley. Carolina. Her grandmother has been, who has dementia, has been given two weeks to live. Hmm. And then uh, Sister Lisa has two unspokens. Three. three. Sister Lisa has three unspokens. So Baridi has four unspokens, and Bethy also has four unspokens. Lizzie? Three unspokens. Three unspokens for Lizzie. Uh, Miss Anna? Uh, Brother Richard not here, so that's two unspoken for Brother Richard. Smoking for me. Also pray for our family members and friends that are not ready. And you had four unspoken, you said. Okay, so two, the two unspokens that Brother Richard often mentions, he's not here tonight, uh, sick, and then. Miss Anna also has four unspokens. And then pray for our unsaved family, friends, and coworkers. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, so four unspokens for me, please. Priscilla and Bethany, my daughter here on my list. Um, so the Maxwells, Orly, Tudic, Price's shoulder. Bob, 
continue to pray for Jasmine. Wow. Any update on him? Testing her for it. Okay, so you can pray for the Jups then. <coughs> Rob and me. N E E. That's R O B B N E E J U P P. N E E. N E E. So it's R O B B and N E E J U P P. That's R O double B N double E J U double P. Those are my in-laws, and uh, not you know not only that, not only that, but uh, it was because of him God used him to preach the gospel, and I got saved. You know, so I got a, I got salvation out of out of it, and I got a wife out of it, and the rest is history, and present, and future. So praise the Lord for that. And Sister Norma's dad, Brother Roger Speak, Betty Martin and her family, Eddie Castro, Kim Burnett, and James Dahl. Okay, and then add my cousin Tim to that too. So that's going to be uh, Ray Gibson. And then also uh, after Ray Gibson, you said before that, between those two. Brother Gabriel Brown. Did you say that? I should have if I didn't. I was remiss. Okay. <laughs> I skipped it. said I'd come back and read. You didn't say it. Betty Martin and her family. I got, I got that. Uh, Eddie Castro, Kim Burnett, yeah, James Dahl. Okay, I got a blank there. Sister Norma's dad. King and Sister Norma. Oh, yeah, Miss, uh, Miss Norma's dad. Yeah. Thank you for that, Miss Lynn. And Miss Norma's dad, uh, Brother Roger Speet, uh, Miss Betty Martin, uh, her mom and dad, Brother Eddie, Miss Kim Burnett with her shoulder and sciatica, uh, the Sowells, and then our church ministries. Uh, add him to it. He. I haven't talked to him, but he he texted me last Wednesday and said, please put me on the list. He wasn't specific, but then uh, I didn't get the text till after church, and I went in the office and saw it on the phone. So sometimes when they text, it'll buzz me on the watch, and sometimes it doesn't. And that time it didn't, and so I didn't see it until after church. So I wanted to go ahead and add him while I'm thinking about it. I know he's working. And he wasn't here Sunday, which means he's working. Yeah. I've got two on the focus and then our nation, our leaders, and the future leaders. Okay. Isaac has two unspokens. Our nation and leaders. The peace of Jerusalem. And Isaac goes for his driving test on Monday to get his license, and at the same time, Marianne goes to get her permit. So now I'm going to have, you know, and I've got two more hours with Isaac that we've got to get between now and Monday, and then, uh, and then Johnny, you know, I'm, he's upstairs helping, and so, uh, so, oh, there he is in the back, okay. You were up there. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, so Johnny has his permit, and I'm trying to work him into the rotation, and now Mary Ann's going to have her permit Monday, and we're working her in the rotation. And I do the parent taught, you know, homeschool, parent taught driver education, uh, you know, all this stuff. In my, that's what I do in my spare time. And so, uh, you know, and then they got to have their hours, and they got to have their night hours, and then their day hours, and all the different types, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah. So. It's a good time, and it's very, very rewarding. And I'm an amazing teacher. <laughs> Testify. <laughs> no, I, I'm just real kind and real patient, you know, and that kind of stuff. Other than that. <laughs> yeah, let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, right? So... Uh, but, you know, uh, like, like Brother Mike said, it, you know, it's good. It's important to have a good sense of humor. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, and you don't need a prescription for it. Praise the Lord. No, side of, no, no negative side effects. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Brother Gabriel, Gabriel on the band. Six unspoken. Brother Gabriel, six unspoken. Brother Ben has two. All right, Brother Jason. Uh, so also, we could pray for uh, our parents, pray for my parents. So they're uh, out in Fort Lauderdale right now, and then they're going to be taking a cruise uh, Friday. So we just um, travel mercies for them, protection. There are the ashes, and they're the ashes, mom and dad. And so we have Brother Jason Ash, and then we have Brother Greg Ash, both in the church, and then their parents are going on a cruise. And so uh, pray that they don't have too much fun. Or <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll pray for them. All right, praise the Lord. to pray for the Travers daughter Becky who's been struggling with cancer now for a long time uh, they recommended in the beginning of all this because of the progression and the prognosis hospice be called in and uh, the Travers prayed uh, they informed us and we prayed and God God just heard and answered prayer that's what happened God heard and he answered prayer and he spared her life and now she wasn't supposed to have but a short amount of time. And now she's had two years, almost two years. When they said call hospice in, there's no hope. And I remember, and this will be in my mind as long as I have a mind that functions. Uh, Brother Don said, that's what the doctors say. But that's not what God said. Let's talk to God and see what he has to say. That stuck with me. That had a huge impact on me. And so praise the Lord for that. And so we talked to God, and it turns out he had something to say. And then Miss Brenda would often say, you know, you, you don't know. You don't know what God's will is in these situations. But James said, you have not because you ask not. 
So let's not make it be. If, if, if it's not God's will, that's fine. We can, we can accept that, especially because his grace is sufficient. But let's not let it be just because we didn't ask. And so we asked, and God had something to say, and so she's made it all this time. And it's not been easy. It's not been easy. It's been tough, and there have been some good times and some good moments. And, and then there's just been a lot of difficulties and, and so much. And right now, there has been some positive movement toward possibly her being received at MD Anderson. So continue to pray for God's will in that. And uh, chemo originally had some tremendous results. The last round didn't. And then she's just had another round praying that these uh, uh, have some good results as well. And so... <coughs> So, Lord, thank you for answered prayer in that. We continue to come, come to you with it. So continue to pray for them. I'm going to ask you to pray for Bobby and Nikita uh, in southern Georgia, my son and his wife. And uh, I won't give any details, just have some difficulties there. So please pray for them. else? Joey. Joey has three unspokens. Uh, Brother Danny's not here tonight. That means he's probably working. Brother Lewis. God, please pray this. Uh, first one is uh, we pray for getting to start test tomorrow. And uh, God, please do a start test. I believe. Second one is uh, for guidance to see what God wants me to. Uh, uh, I'm trying to see what God wants me to go for my next job. I know high training is what I'm trying to shoot for, so if that's what God wants to be, then it is what it is. But if not, I, I'm content with what I got right now. And the third one is um, I was speaking to my brother uh, over the phone, uh, Jose, the one that. And uh, he's getting out in January 2025, and he said that uh, he's starting to go to church and he's starting to have uh, Bible, Bible classes with some brothers in Christ in it. Mm-hmm. And so he said uh, uh, to ask the church to pray for him. Amen. Okay, the next time you talk to him, you tell him that you mentioned it and that we prayed and that we're going to continue to pray for him. Amen. And so he's supposed to be getting out. Uh, Jose is, he's been in prison for a while now, and he's, uh, it seems like God's doing a work in his heart, he's looking at getting out in January, this coming January, and Brother Lewis has been on him about trying to come here, bring him here, and he's indicated that he wants to come, when he gets out, he wants to come, and so uh, you and I both know that there will be every reason under the sun and every attack to try to keep that from happening, and so for our, our part, what we do is we pray. We pray because there, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And uh, the devil is powerful. He's not all powerful. That position's taken, right? And so we, we pray to the one that is all powerful, almighty, that God would um, put a hedge about him, that he would protect him, uh, that he would help him to maintain his Resolve, quit yourselves like men, the Bible says. And so that he would have that resolve, that he would be steadfast, unmovable, and that God's will would be done in his life. And so for him to ask Brother Lewis to ask the church to pray, that's a big step right there. And now it's just like God to hear and to answer those prayers and to show himself mighty in his life. So we pray. Write his name down, Jose Duarte, and uh, pray for him, not just tonight, but pray for him between now and January, and let's trust God uh, to do something big. Amen. All right. All right, so we're praying for Phoenix's test tomorrow. He's got a star test at school, and then... uh, Brother Lewis finished his pipe. He just got a recent, recently got a new job. It's been, what now, about a month or so? And uh, you like it, and it's a good job. 
but he went to school for pipe fitting, and so uh, just he's happy, he's content with the job that he's at now, but just pray for wisdom and for guidance. If God has something else, uh, why he went to school, so on and so forth, uh, that the Lord would just make it clear what he has for Brother Lewis. Work wise. All right. And with that, we'll go ahead and pray. And so, uh, Isaac, I'll ask you to start us off tonight. And then, uh, Brother Jason, if you'll pick up where he leaves off and pray nice and loudly, and then I'll close this out tonight. All right. And you can pray silently or follow along or just amen when these pray. Isaac. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for allowing our missionary that we just recently started supporting uh, off of our last mission conference to come and present to us Lord the work that they've been doing. Um, what a tremendous encouragement, Lord, and the things that they've been going through there. It encourages us to keep pressing on, Lord, mm -hmm. and uh, to see faithful men all over the world still serving you, Lord. I just want to ask that you would be with them, and that you bless them, and that you would help them. Just praise you for all that you're doing, Lord, for all the many people that are being saved and lives that are being touched. I just pray, Father, that you continue to, to be with them, to work with them, and continue to just make that ministry grow, Lord, and that more souls will be saved. And I also pray for protection for those that are leading that ministry, Lord, it's a very dangerous job. They have targets on their back, Lord, and obviously the devil. 
know that you're stronger, Lord, and so we just ask that you be with them and protect them. Continue to use them mightily, Lord, for your will. We also pray, Lord, towards the missions conference. We look forward to it, uh, to hearing more encouraging reports. And uh, just pray, Father, that you would do a great work during the conference, that you would prepare our hearts, Lord, to, to learn and to grow from what you have to teach us through it, and then also pray that you would protect the other missionaries that are coming, uh, Barfield, Copley, Wilsons, and uh, pray also for Cindy Barfield, Lord, uh, obviously they're still trying to figure out what's going on with her, just pray, Father, for wisdom, guidance, care, uh, diagnosis, Lord, and appropriate treatment to help her, and pray for healing for her. Also pray for uh, Sister Sophia's family, um, and especially for the kids, Steve, Levi, and I just pray, Father, that you would be with the family of Lord during this difficult time, you would give them comfort and guidance through it. Um, pray for protection and for Brother Bruce who's traveling for work, and uh, pray, Lord, that you would would be able to come home Friday. Also pray for uh, protection for my parents as they are enjoying the weather cruise. And uh, I want to pray for Brother Jake. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you got a brief opportunity to come to the church again so we could serve. Uh, first, we thank you for your service, Lord. Thank you for your willingness to serve no matter what the circumstance. We pray, Father, just for a um, clear diagnosis of what they only have and a quick healing as well that the masses would be taken away and that you'd be able to return to work in the church sooner rather than later. <coughs> I want to pray for Brother Lewis and thank you that he's in church tonight. Uh, thank you that he's able to be here. Thank you that he passed that course for pipe fitting. Thank you that you know, he does have a great job, but he's asking for wisdom and guidance uh, with his career, especially considering the course he just did for pipe fitting. I just pray that you would help him. Know your will is there, Lord, and I think you would open a way for him to be uh, successful, Lord, and that he could give you glory through it. Um, pray that you would be with his son Phoenix, who uh, has a star test. well in that and also want to pray for Jose Duarte uh, just pray Father that you would make a way for him to get out of prison January and that he would come to church Lord. he say that he has a desire to come and I just pray that you would continue to work in his heart draw him close to you draw him into your church Lord so that he can grow and be a blessing I also want to pray for uh, Bobby and Nikita. I pray that you would be with them in their difficulties. You know what those are, Lord. And I uh, want to pray for Brother Jeff Gates, still dealing with bone cancer. He's at home recovering from stem cell treatment. Just waiting word on when he can get out without. He's very anxious to get out. I can kind of relate. It's uh, kind of boring and lonesome just to be stuck in the house. I just pray, Father, that you would uh, allow him to, to get out sooner rather than later. And then looking forward to opportunities to visit him. And, and then, of course, pray just for healing for him and strength. And then, especially strength for his sister as well. He's caring for him. Then I want to pray for. Brother Richard, who's out sick, just pray for healing for him and a quick return back to church. And then his wife, Tammy, um, also has a mask, just pray that you continue to help her. And then uh, pray that you would be with Ina for his driving test on Monday and Marianne for coming.
Lord, I thank you so much uh, just for all that you do for us. I thank you, Lord, just for, for salvation, for grace, for mercy, for provisions, guidance, for wisdom. Thank you for the church. Thank you for uh, the family that we have through you, brothers and sisters in Christ here. And thank you for your word, Lord, that we have a sure word prophecy that we have something written down we can go to that we can trust. Amen. Lord, I thank you so much. I pray that you would continue to be with us as, even as we leave tonight. Uh, continue to press on us how much we need you to do and draw us ever closer to you and use us for your glory. Lord, we are grateful tonight for your goodness to us. We thank you for prayer. We thank you for the power of it. We thank you for the possibilities of it. We thank you for the privilege of it, and we thank you for the promise. Lord, you said, if you said, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You said, ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. You said, again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And Lord, we pray because we need you. We pray because the Lord Jesus Christ, your holy child, has given us access through his own blood, through his own merit. We pray because you command us to. We pray because you invite us to. We pray because you promise to hear and to answer. And John said, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And so, Lord, we pray we bring these petitions before you. I thank you, Lord, for the report tonight from Brother Mike. I thank you for he and Sister Mona, the ministry, Lord, that you've given them, that you've called them to, and that you are using them in. I thank you for the 16 churches in Egypt. And, uh, Lord, you've, again, exceeded expectations and have gone past the, the goal. We pray for South Sudan, the civil war that's going on there, the displaced families, pastors, Christians, lost people, Lord, just ravaged by civil war uh, in that country. And we pray, God, for your help and for your will to be accomplished. And, Lord, that this might fall out rather into the furtherance of the gospel. We pray for the two churches in Syria, for the one church in Turkey. We pray for the works and uh, Christians and pastors in Lebanon and in Yemen. And the difficulties there, we pray for Pastor Massad, uh, his wife that has cancer, Lord, and the difficulties that they face. And we pray tonight for Sister Norma. Uh, thank you that she was able to hold off and go to the doctor today. Thank you, Lord, for the, for the positive aspect of the report. And then, Lord, for follow-ups that she has to have uh, scheduled appointments to be made and different things like that. I pray, God, that you'd provide help. I pray for her and Brother Rufino. Uh, we pray for... Sister Lisa's principal, Dr. Kelly, uh, who has lost her dad, and she'll be traveling for that funeral. And uh, we, we prayed uh, last year for, for her dad, and now Lord, he's passed, and we pray, God, that you'd be with her, that you'd help her. Thank you for Sister Lisa's care. Uh, for those that she works with, we pray for Carolina Morelli, whose grandma has been given two weeks to live. And Lord, we ask that you might uh, use this even to fall out to the rather rather to the furtherance of the gospel and that you'd be glorified in it <coughs> we pray for brother bryce's shoulder thank you that he has an appointment upcoming a week from tomorrow and lord you open doors and that's what he asked that we pray and again lord you've answered we pray that you'd give uh, provide a, a way forward a path forward uh, some kind of treatment something that would not be too dr dramatic or too drastic to help him Lord, with the, with the difficulties that he's had and is having. Uh, we pray for the Talia Pharaohs. We pray for the Van Dykes. We pray for Jasmine. Lord, she's been out for a while now, and this sickness just won't let go. The medications have uh, their own side effects, and uh, her body just can't, can't process them. And so, Lord, we pray for help. We continue to pray for uh, Rob Jupp and, and me. We pray for uh, Ray Gibson. Uh, we pray for Miss Norma's dad. And, Lord, she's asked us specifically to pray for his salvation. His time, all of our time is, is limited on this earth. But, Lord, his, because of the advanced age and because of his uh, physical condition, his health, uh, Lord, it won't be long. And he's not saved. I pray, oh God, that you'd do a work in his heart. 
We know that you will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We know that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and that you have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. And so, Lord, we pray for Miss Norma's dad, that you would save him, that you would do whatever it takes to get his attention, remove the veil, shine the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God and unto him, that he might and draw him by your Holy Spirit to the Lord Jesus Christ, that he might believe and be saved in this 11th hour of his life. We pray for Brother Roger's feet. Lord, he has chronic pain, difficulties, but he just keeps on going and keeps on serving God, and we thank you, Lord, for him. We pray for uh, the Martin family, uh, especially Miss Betty's mom and dad. Uh, her dad has gone way down, uh, a servant of the Lord, a soldier of the cross for many, many years, and then the difficulties in his mind and the health problems that he has, and then her mom as she watches her hero, her husband, her sweetheart go down and as she ministers to him, oh God, I pray that you would help. We pray for Sister Kim Burnett with her shoulder, with the sciatica, uh, and the different uh, health issues that she has. I pray, God, you'd strengthen her, you'd provide help and healing. We pray for our church outreach ministries, uh, the various ones, the street ministries, the door-to-door -door ministry. Uh, Lord, thank you for those. And I pray that souls, oh God, would be saved. Uh, we pray for my cousin Tim uh, with his work schedule. It keeps him out of church an awful lot, uh, sometimes working seven days a week. And, and Lord, we just pray for him, encourage him, strengthen him. And Lord, we pray for a job where he would be able to be in church as he's asked us to pray uh, more faithfully. Thank you for the good report about Becky, Lord, the movement. There's been some movement uh, toward her getting accepted with MD Anderson, with the insurance and various things. Lord, we pray for uh, a successful outcome to this most recent round of chemo. And Lord, we thank you for extending her life uh, more than fourfold what the doctors thought possible in the beginning. And so, Lord, we know that that's because of you. And we thank you for it. Thank you for hearing us tonight. Thank you for the service. Thank you for the gathering of God's people, the encouragement we draw from one another. We pray for those who've been out sick, those who are out sick, those who can't come. We pray for those who are working tonight. Thank you for the live stream and those that are able to tune in. Thank you for all that you do for us. You daily load us with benefits. We praise you, O oh God. We love you tonight. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church.